What is up? Matthew Moore here for the EDM News for September 11, 2018 with my special guest today, Plain White Wall. Give it up for uh, Plain White Wall, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's get, let's get right into the first piece of news. David Guetta announces that his alias that was more or less a secret is now an official not only artist but also label, of course, as being Jack Back. If you're not familiar with Jack Back, it's essentially where David Guetta releases all of his less commercial, more underground music. So while this is going to be affecting David Guetta's commercial music, uh, his album 7 is going to be released soon, this later this month, to me this seems more of like he's sort of going to be sectioning off where his creative outlet is and where his commercial outlet is. So look to 7, which is David Guetta's next album, to be just super commercial, really having no dance tunes, maybe except for the Avicii feature that we're going to get to later. And then I think rather than having like that 10-minute part during a set where he turns on the lights and then he gets on the mic he's like just you and me and the house music will instead just have full-on jack back sets and david getta sets at any given festival which i think is kind of cool so even if you're not a david getta fan you might want to check out a jack back set when he starts doing them because i imagine he's going to try to push this sort of like how oliver Helens does high low occasionally when he has different festival sets in other news, fellow bass producer OK found himself in hot water with little Zan somehow by posting this photo of him with who is now Lil Zan's ex-girlfriend, Noah Cyrus. Noah Cyrus, also a singer-songwriter, and Lil Zan screenshotted it and publicly broke up with Noah Cyrus. This really is less of a thing that OK did and more of just Lil Zan freaking out, in my opinion. Pretty much every DJ agrees that whatever is going on between Lil Zan and OK is pretty ridiculous, at least on Lil Zan's side. Other than the really silly drama between OK and Lil Zan, OK also posted a number of journal entries on Twitter saying just how he struggled with drug abuse and mental health in general in the past. One thing that struck me about his essay is just how he talked about doing a 10 hour flight to Las Vegas and the 17 hour flight back to Asia and just and just saying how lonely he was and how he just didn't speak to anyone for over 24 hours while just being so mentally exhausted he couldn't even do basic human things. And that's the thing that when I look at all these documentaries, whether it's you know the Steve Aoki documentary or the Martin Garrix documentary, less so the Avicii documentary, the Avicii documentary captured a little bit, but a lot of these DJs are not super happy on tour. They're exhausted. And it's not that crazy, you know, bottle service, models, and all these lifestyle things we attribute to a DJ. It's really quite lonely, boring, and sad. And not saying that that's everyone's case. You know, you could be on tour on a tour bus with a bunch of friends, like what Virtual Self is doing with his buddies. But, you know, sometimes you just got gigs all over the fucking place and you got to do them. In other news, Ty Dollar Sign was arrested for drug possession while in Atlanta, but another person accompanying him in the ride, however not arrested, is Skrillex. While only Ty Dollar Sign was arrested for possession of cocaine and marijuana, the body cam footage of the police officer shows that Skrillex was also in the car where the drugs were found. It's just funny that he's constantly surrounded by either rappers or producers or singers that are always doing drugs, especially, you know, Ty Dollar Sign and GEZ who were jointly headlining a tour together when this rush was made. So overall, I'm just happy that Skrillex is okay, and we ain't gonna be delaying this album, we ain't gonna be delaying this project. Our favorite top 100 DJ list, DJ Mag, is actually holding a fundraiser for UNICEF by auctioning off several items of top DJs. Most of the close stuff seems pretty lame, but there are some tickets to see Dimitri Vegas like Mike and to go to Tomorrowland. Oh yes, producers, producers. Arl Grimes' Halloween mix is starting to be compiled. He posted on Instagram saying he wants submissions from you guys. I know last year some rando guy got one of his songs on there and it got thousands of listens just because it was sitting in the Halloween mix. So definitely try to go and submit any spooky tracks, any ghastly sort of tracks that you guys might have. That's my producer tip of the week. Producers, in virtual self news, they are on tour right now. However, I was asked to cover an article about the fact that some of the visuals that are on the virtual self tour were designed by Mark Robinson, Paul Robinson's younger brother. Mark Robinson was taking questions earlier on Instagram and someone asked if he had any art in the virtual self set and he simply replied with yes. I don't know why I'm reporting on it because this is just kind of contributing to more people just hitting up 
Porter Robinson's siblings and family asking them about Porter Robinson, which is kind of annoying. Babylonian's the shit. I love his Let's Plays and whatnot. In Res slash Miss America news, Miss Michigan, Emily Sioma, had a viral video go live about her talking about the Flint, Michigan crisis. It's just good to see that the cult of Res is promoting, you know, a female caring about our community and being a leader. That's really way cooler than Boonk Gang. So shout out to Rez and Emily Sioma. I hope Emily does well in her pageantry. Marshmallow was on Ninja Warrior. He did really well. Not sure if it was actually him. I think Marshmallow should be on Man vs. Wild with Bear Grylls. I think that'd be really cool and interesting, considering that he can't speak. New music news. New music. New music news. Odessa revealed on Instagram that they're going to be releasing their new track, Loyal. They don't have a release date for, but it seems like everyone is highly anticipating it. It's been played through a couple times. You can check out the teaser on their Instagram. It kind of sounds like a trap banger. It's going to be really interesting to hear. It has that sort of more masa majestic trap vibe. Looking forward to listening to and reacting to it on my Friday first reaction video. Kind of weird timing for it. I would expect it to come out sometime during the summer, but happy it's going to be here. So that was all the brand new EDM news for September 11, 2018. Let me know what you guys thought about the stories below. I'll see you guys next time.